Hey, what's up, YouTube? You finally get to see my face and hear me talk. Um, doing this video mostly because, number one, there is no other ones, and I wanted to share kind of the process of what we got going on here. Kind of hard to see. I'll snip in pictures of what's going on. But basically, what we're doing today is this is the bottom of my 2ZZ motor that's going into that car. It's an MR2 Spider. Um, I didn't want to buy the big expensive Moroso oil pan. I was tempted to. Did a little reading, went down a rabbit hole, and read about the oil pump being a little too far, um, not shallow enough, shall we say, in, uh, in the oil pan, which I'm using the 1ZZ oil pan. Modified it. It's got a little bit of baffling inside to trap the oil at the bottom But uh, long story short, I wanted to use this I saw that this needed to be spaced out and I found a kit that Ishihari Am I saying that right? Ishihara Johnson, Ishihari Johnson, something Put a link in the description because that's what we do, right? Um, anyways, it's a link to space the oil pump pickup lower in the oil pan. So there are these little spacers that will go here. And uh, yeah, but because I'm an idiot and I waste money, I hope my wife doesn't hear this, um, I also bought the thing that they're known for, which is this little bad boy right here. Look at that. It is a crank scraper, and, or oil scraper, I don't know. Um, it's also got some more channels and stuff. I'll show all the pictures when it's all installed. But basically it does exactly what the Moroso oil pan does for about half the price. Um, and also retains the stock oil pan because I gotta keep it low low. California, baby. Um, anyways, I'll put a bunch of pictures in to kind of show you what's going on with this. Um, but for now, what this will be is an install video. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I never know what I'm doing, but that's why I'm making a video so that when there's another random person that doesn't know what they're doing, they can find this video. And that's the wonderful world of YouTube. All right, so we're back. <laughs> uh, so I remove the oil pickup. Check the screen, the screen is nice and clear benefits of a low mile Japanese motor versus your junkyard US motor and the other thing that came off was the OEM baffling so this isn't the worst thing in the world but it's far from the best and what we do get with the Ishihara Johnson crank scraper super 2020 2000 COVID edition patent pending uh, is a much nicer version. What you see here is each of the baffles has an area for the oil to drain from, uh, various little locations here to kind of minimize what gets splashed up. The idea for this thing is really twofold. One is we want to make sure the oil stays in the pan, but also that it doesn't fly onto the crank. Um, there's a word for it, but I don't know what it is because I failed engineering. Um, now, in addition to the plate, you also get these little channeling things, which um, there's no instructions, but you know, there's places for everything to go and I can tell what it is. And there's also pictures on the website, so you should be able to figure that out. Anyways, so essentially what this is doing here, and I'll, I'll show some after pictures, but uh, this is going that way and that way or whatever you'll see it when it's done magics of Hollywood uh, but basically what this is doing is it's going to channel the oil to essentially flow into and stay in the bottom of the pan because really the goal of all of this is to make sure this guy is always submerged in oil because when you're spinning your high revving 2ZZ motor to 8,000 RPMs, you wanna make sure there's always oil in the oil pan. 
and the pickup is drinking that oil because if not boom is what will happen uh, so normally I would do like a time lapse like I did when I took all of the the old motor out of there but battery's low I don't think you want to stare at the back of my head any more than you did the first time and I got my fancy jumpsuit on this time too all right uh, we are back as you can see I've got it mostly installed one thing you always want to do before you do funny business like this see if it will turn over you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you've installed something that won't work so here we are testing it thought I heard something it's good compression not a good sound those aren't good sounds so you want to inspect see what's going on that's what we'll do we being me myself and I and you the viewers sit there enjoy your popcorn all right well we have a problem I'll insert some pictures of what I got but as you can see overall it's a very beautiful piece but we've got a lot of these little guys that their job as you see they go up into the lower block area crankshaft is rotating here and what's happening I think you might be able to see it but this little guy right here you can see the little nick just enough to so I need to evaluate what I want to do I may just hack off the whole thing this little log right there um, that would be the easiest solution. I could also just trim it a tiny bit. We'll see. I'm not sure. I'm going to have a meeting of the minds with my group of cronies. One of which you know from my previous videos if you watch any of my stuff. If you don't, welcome. If you do, welcome. This is me. I am Mr. Tuman. So, okay, let's get serious for a second. The problem is, I can't use this as it is. I have to modify it. That's not fun. I spent $300 on this. I was hoping to slap this together, throw the oil pan on, try to get this engine into the car sometime this month. Now that I have this and it's not gonna work, part of me wants to be lazy and just put the spacer on the oil pump pickup but I also want to drive the car hard and I've blown up enough cars to know if it's good use it this is good this is a very good piece of equipment versus this this I'll throw it back up real quick sits right there and that's it it only worries about what's happening over here oil sloshing around over here granted it's kind of shallow on the pan but Oil can still slosh up, oil can still slosh up, and basically you have one and two protected, three and four are not. I hope I did the math right. Flywheel's on that side. It's a four cylinder. If I'm wrong, tell me. If I'm right, tell me too. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so, when we left off, we had a little problem here with this guy so meeting of the minds it was either cut it all off or cut part of it off and what we decided to do is take this little section out okay so you can see now not as tall as the so we should be good to go 
I'm going to test fit it, double check it again for the third time. And if everything is good, then we move on to phase two. So stay tuned. As you can see, it's on. I test fit it after the first cut. It turns out, uh, after the first cut, turns out I needed a second cut. A little bummer. It's okay. That's why we test it. Make sure it works. Uh, so now that I've rotated it a bunch of times, made sure there was no interference, double checked each of the cylinders to make sure as the, it's basically what's hitting is the connecting rod bolts, as they're coming up, they're hitting the little things that are, uh, I guess they're supposed to block the oil from sloshing back up. Uh, and so I had to shave those down, you know, a couple mils each so that I could go by without any issues. So now that that's done, we are going to uh, seal the windage tray slash crank scraper with genuine Toyota sealant. Seal Packing 103 is what is recommended from the factory. So I went to the dealership and got that. All right, so uh, we're gonna seal this. Uh, they recommend keeping it on there for about 12 hours um, so that it seals. And then we can move to phase two, which is the oil pan and the pickup. Um, all right, here we go. So, um, oil pickup was measured and installed. So I got one spacer in there. It was enough to compensate, get it to that six mil ish space that you're looking for. Uh, I got some gasket maker already on the lower or the upper half of it. I'm about to put it on the lower half, put the oil pan back on. Um, not torquing everything down yet, tightening it up, let it sit overnight, and then I'll tighten it tomorrow, make sure it's all good to go. Long story short on this whole thing, uh, since we're gonna wrap this up right now, uh, looks like a good quality part, not a bad price. Um, definitely check, double check before you do anything crazy. And um, yeah, there may be an update later once this is in there and then I'm over at the racetracks. So stay tuned. Toodles.